Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungson, Pray for us. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather around the table of the Eucharist so that the Word of God might be sowed into our hearts and that this seed might grow and bear fruit. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery, let us first acknowledge our sins 
and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to, to people, people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all, the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We gather again this Sunday around the table of the Eucharist. And every Sunday, whenever we gather together as one community, we express our belongingness to God's kingdom. Kapag tayo po ay nagsasama-sama tuwing linggo, meron man tayong physical distancing ngayon, no? at uh, magkakalayo tayo ng kaunti, pero hindi ibig sabihin magkakagalit tayo. 
tuwing tayo ay nagtitipon tuwing linggo sa banal na misa, pinapakayag natin na tayo ay kabilang sa kaharian ng Diyos, sa bayan ng Diyos. Kaya kapag ikaw ay nagsimba tuwing linggo, nandito ka man sa loob, nariyan ka man sa labas, nanonood ka man sa online streaming, kaisa ka namin. Kasama ka sa misa na ito. Wherever you may be, you express that we belong in God's kingdom. And my dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, we are being taught by our Lord Jesus Christ how it is to belong to God's kingdom. Tinuturuan po tayo ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Paano nga bang sasabihin na ikaw ay kabilang sa pinaghaharian ng Diyos? Paano ba natin makikita na tayo ay kabilang sa kanyang bayan, sa kanyang kaharian? In the parables in the gospel today, Jesus uses the image of planting, of sowing seeds. Para maintindihan daw natin, gumamit si Jesus ng mga talinghaga ng larawan at ang ginamit niyang larawan ay tungkol sa pagtatanim. Pagtatanim ng mga maliliit na butil. And Jesus explains to us in the parables of the gospel today that in the kingdom of God, a sower plants a small seed. But when he plants that small seed, he will take care of it, he will wait for it, but he knows that one day, that small seed will become a big tree and it will bear fruit. Sa kaharian ng Diyos, sabi ni Jesus, para kang nagtatanim. May maliit na butil kapag itinanim mo at inalagaan mo, matulog ka man sa gabi, kinabukasan o sa mga susunod na araw, alam mo, may lalabas, may tutubo. Doon sa maliit na butil na yan, magiging isang puno at balang araw, mamumunga. And Jesus also repeated that kind of parable in the second part of the Gospel. He said, even if the seed is the smallest of seeds, like the mustard seed, you know that it will spring up and will become the greatest of all the plants, putting forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in the shade. Sabi ni Jesus, kahit na magtanim ka dyan ng pinakamaliit na butil, alam mong yan ay tutubo at lalaki bilang isang malaking puno na nagbibigay ng lilim sa mga ibon. In the kingdom of God, you do not just see the seed. In that seed, you see the big tree that it can become. Ganyan pala sa kaharian ng Diyos. Kapag nakita mo ang butil, hindi mo lang nakikita ang maliit na buto yung maliit na butil. Nakikita mo doon sa butil, nakikita mo na ang malaking puno na mangyayari at ang mga prutas na iyong aanihin 
pagdating ng araw. In philosophy, I don't know if there are uh, philosophy majors here or those watching us tonight. In philosophy, we call this actuality and potentiality. The actuality of the seed is that small seed that you are holding. But in that seed, there is potentiality. And you can already see in that seed its capacity, its potentiality to become a big tree in the future. That is how it is in the kingdom of God. You do not just see the small seed. You can already see the big tree that it can become. That is also what we have heard in our first reading today from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. When God tells the people of Israel that He will make them grow like a cedar tree. He will get a small shoot, plant it, and in time, it will become a big cedar tree. Sabi sa ating unang pagbasa, ito ang sabi ng Diyos sa bayan ng Israel. Kukuha siya ng maliit na usbong sa isang puno ng sedro. Yang maliit na usbong, maliit na sanga, ay puputulin niya, itatanim niya, at alam niya, ang maliit na usbong na yan ay magiging malaking puno pagdating ng araw. Ganyan sa kaharian ng Diyos. Hindi mo lang nakikita ang maliit na sanga, ang maliit na butil, nakikita mo ang puno na lalabas mula sa maliit na butil na iyan. That is why in our second reading today, in the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, St. Paul would say, we walk by faith, not just by sight. Siguro naririnig po niyo itong madalas na Bible passage, no? We walk by faith, not by sight. Namumuhay tayo hindi lamang sa ating paningin, kundi sa ating pananampalataya. Mahalaga po itong paliwanag ni San Pablo. Sapagkat kapag ang gagamitin lang natin sa buhay ay paningin, ang makikita mo lang ay yung maliit na butil. Pero kapag tayo ay namuhay at tumingin ng may pananampalataya, makikita mo sa maliit na butil na yan ang malaking puno na mangyayari at lalabas sa butil na iyan. When we walk by sight, we will only see the seed, a very small seed. But when we walk by faith, in that seed, we are able to see the big tree that it can become. My dear brothers and sisters, how do you look at your life today? Do you just see a small seed when you look at yourself and say, I am just a small person, a small seed. Paano mo nakikita ang buhay mo ngayon? Tingin mo ba sa sarili mo, maliit ka lang. Maliit lang ako na butil. Maliit lang ako na tao. Hindi ako sikat. Wala akong kakayanan. Hindi yan ang tingin ng Diyos sa iyo. Tinitingnan ka ng Diyos, hindi isang maliit na buti lamang. Nakikita niya sa iyo ang isang malaking puno na balang araw ay mangyayari mula sa mga maliliit na butil ng buhay. 
at this time of our pandemic, many of the aspects of our life have become little. Marami po sa mga bagay sa buhay natin ang lumiit ngayong pandemya. Lumiit ang kita. Lumiit ang negosyo. Lumiit ang trabaho. Lumiit ang kakayanan sa pagtuturo. Lumiit ang kakayanan sa pag-aaral. And we look at ourselves most of the time in this pandemic as little seeds. And most of the time, we look down at ourselves. We only see the small seed that we are today. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus reminds us today that in the kingdom of God, if you belong to the kingdom of God, you will not just see the small seeds, but in that small seed, you will see the tree that it will become in the days ahead. Mga kaminamahal na kapatid, sa panahon po ngayon, kung maliit ang tingin natin sa sarili natin, tandaan natin, ang nakikita ng Diyos sa kaliitan natin ngayon ay hindi lamang isang maliit na butil. Nakikita niya ang kakayahan ng maliit na butil na ito na maging isang malaking puno na mumunga ng marami nagsasanga ng marami na balang araw ay magiging isang kalugod-lugod na puno para sa Kanya at para sa bayan ng Diyos How do you look at yourself? How do you look at your life today? Maybe at this time, we are just small seeds. But God is already seeing at you in this small seed the great tree that we can become. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Like a great tree with flourishing branches, or like seed quietly growing, so the kingdom of God increases. We make our prayers together as our share in that loving plan of divine providence. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the growing church on earth, that it may welcome and redeem the cultures and values of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For leaders whose plans influence the economy, that they may encourage and support farmers and all those who help to bring food to our table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who develop the land, that as they make this earth more productive, so may they reverence the natural environment created by God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our own community that we may grow in grace as we welcome people to the life of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, that they may live forever in the courts of our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God, you are the source of all goodness and grace. Hear these prayers we make as our intercession for others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food, and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please all kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ngayon po ay dadasalin natin ang ikaapat na araw ng pagnonobena sa Mahal na Birhen ng Antipolo. Tayo pong lahat, Mahal na Ina at Reyna ng Mag-anak na Pilipino, pangalagaan mo ang mga ama ng tahanan na may katungkulang itaguyod ang kanilang mag-anak. Ilayo mo sila sa kasalanan at bigyan ng lakas upang mapaglabanan ng mga ito. At gayon din naman, igawad mo sa amin ang ninanasa namin at hinihingi sa pagsisyam na ito. Kung ito'y ukol sa kapurihan ng Diyos at kagalingan ng kaluluwa namin. Amen. Nagpapasalamat po tayo sa uh, Shrine and Cathedral of Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage in Antipolo sa uh, pagbisita po sa atin ng mahal na imahen ng mahal na birhen ng Antipolo at siya po ay mamamalagi rito ng siyam na araw simula po nung Huwebes at uh, sa darating po na June uh, 18, Biernes ay ipagdiriwang po ang 395th anniversary ng pagdating ng imahen ng Antipolo dito sa ating bansa at magdiriwang po ang ating mahal na tagapangasiwa, Bishop Roderick Pabilio, ng isang banal na misa dito sa Manila Cathedral ng alas 12 ng tanghali, araw ng biyernes. Kaya inaanyayahan po namin kayong lahat kung kayo po ay makakadalaw dito sa Manila Cathedral sa mga susunod na araw o kaya po ay sumama sa ating mga online uh, mass upang makapagdasal po tayo at makapanalangin sa mahal na birhen ng kapayapaan at mabuting paglalakbay ang birhen ng Antipolo. Gayun din po, sa darating naman po na Martes, ay sisimulan naman natin ang siyam na araw na uh, paghahanda natin para sa pagdating ng ating bagong arsobispo dito sa Maynila, Cardinal Jose Advincula. Siya po ay manggagaling sa Archdiocese of Capiz. At uh, kung makikita niyo po, ang kanyang mga larawan ay nandyan na sa labas ng ating katedral at sa iba't ibang mga parokya sa Archdiocese of Manila. Ang pinakamagandang paghahanda po natin ay panalangin, pagpapasalamat sa Diyos para sa Kanya, ipagdasal natin siya. Tayo rin po ay uh, hinihikayat na makinig 
sa ating mga pagtuturo ng katekesis at higit sa lakat ay magbigay ng tulong sa mga nangangailangan. Ito po yung ating mga gagawin na paghahanda para sa installation ng ating bagong Archbishop Jose Cardinal Advincula. Ang kanya pong installation ay sa darating po na June 24 Uh, dito po sa Manila Cathedral. Muli po ay maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikiisa, sa patuloy po niyong mga tulong at pagsuporta sa Manila Cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy now and forever. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We stand For the grand horizon, five hundred years of faith, grateful today, we bear the gift of mission, totally yours, we give ourselves, faithfully yours, until the end, to your mission, Lord. We give our hearts. Though where the sun rises above the hills, share the word and serve those who are in need. Let the morning star accompany your way, spread a fire of mission for the Lord. Yeah.